So I'm going to give you examples of uh, all these three, all these possibilities that we have just discussed about the principal values and principal vectors of the tensor A. So let me give you my first uh, example, A, and let me consider a tensor whose matrix in some coordinate system P is uh, given by this matrix 1 0 0 1 2 0 1 2 3 3 okay you can check that this one has lambda 1 equal to 1 lambda 2 equal to 2 and lambda 3 equal to 3 as the three different principal values so this seems to be corresponding to this case because I have three different principal values I will have three real vi okay all right and you can check that v1 in p will be 2 by 3 1 minus 1 half v2 in p will be 1 by root 10 0 1 3 and v3 well why should i scrunch up i can use the next line as it is let me create more space here also so v3 in p will be 0 0 1 okay so this example a is about this possibility over there okay three real lambda all different three real eigen three real principal vectors okay example b example b uh, let me consider this uh, tensor whose matrix is given by 1 1 0 minus 1 1 0 0 0 1 you should go and check that this this one has only one real va uh, principal value the other two are complex conjugates okay so complex conjugates corresponding to this i have the principal vector which you can again check will be this but corresponding to these I will have complex principal vectors which we are not going to discuss right now so this case corresponds to this option over here where I have one real principal value and complex conjugates corresponding to the real principal value I have one principal vector we will come back to this uh, tensor later on it's, uh, it's a very important tensor in the context of this course okay third example here's a okay let's go back to so here's a tensor the identity tensor whose property is that it operates on any vector a and gives me back a so this is the identity or unit tensor okay so we have seen this one before or at least you could have guessed the existence of something like this so what this means is that implies any vector any vector this is of this form right that means any vector is a principal vector okay but that has only one principal value lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal to lambda 3 is equal to 1 so what we have here is one principal value 
and out of so because I have because all possible vectors are principal vectors I can choose from here choose three independent V so for example they could be EI so what I have shown you is that for the identity tensor I have three principal values which are all the same and I can find three independent principal vectors so this corresponds to one option over here where I have repeated principal values and I am able to find three principal vectors now let me give you an example where that is not possible okay so, so just to kind of check where we were on this slide we were doing examples okay so now so this example I have this particular tensor whose matrix is given by an upper triangular form okay now you can check that in this case again I only have the principal value 1 which is repeated and you check that any vector in the E1, E3 plane is a principal vector. Okay. There is no okay, third principal vector. What do I mean by a third principal vector? See, because any vector in this plane is a principal vector, what this means is that I can choose two independent V i, right? So, for example, I can choose E1 and E3, but I am unable to find a third principal vector. Okay. All right, let's move on. Let's continue our discussion on principal values and principal vectors. Uh, let's start with an example that we have already done uh, up over here. Uh, example A. So I am simply going to uh, grab it from over here and shift it to a new page. Okay, so let's copy and uh, let's put it down here right here okay so this was an example where i had given you a uh, tensor a in some coordinate system the ma matrix of th this is given by this and we had seen it at three real and different uh, principal values for which the associated principal vectors were v1 v2 and v3 and i have normalized them as i said we should always do okay so now what i am going to do is that i am going to plot v1 v2 and v3 in the given coordinate system so we're going to plot these vi in this coordinate system okay so uh, well uh, it's not that easy to plot these things so what i have done is i have sneakily plotted them beforehand over here so let me grab it from over here cut it and you know, paste it over there okay uh, okay so here we have it okay actually let me just keep it on this page okay no problem okay so i have plotted as i said uh, i'm ready to do it up here sorry can't decide this is better okay so i guess this is all right so i have plotted uh, v1 v2 and v3 over here v1 v2 v3 immediately what you should see is that uh, vi dot vj 
is not delta ij so the vi are not orthogonal okay so that's something you, you can check all right it means clear right if you dot v1 if you dot v1 and v2 you will not get zero uh, the other thing that you uh, can easily see is that vi are independent okay are linearly independent okay now any now what we know is that any triplet of independent unit vectors can form a coordinate system okay so i am going to label this coordinate system as v and the origin was p so the origin remains p with unit vectors vi and now the question becomes so what is a in v okay well you can check that it will be well what were lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 zeros everywhere else which was given to be 1 2 and 3 yep 0 0 0 0 0 0 okay how do you get this well you should already know it because it comes from something called a similarity transform which you must have done in your uh, a linear algebra course okay so what have i said over here that i know the tensor in some coordinate system i find the principal vectors they happen to form a coordinate system they are not orthogonal however in this coordinate system formed by the principal vectors this matrix of a takes a particularly simple form and you can derive this by using the similarity transform which you have done in linear algebra another way to write this in our uh, uh, tensorial notation is to say that this is equal to lambda 1 v1 tensor v1 plus lambda 2 v2 tensor v2 plus lambda 3 v3 tensor v3 so we seem to be writing the same thing all over again so uh, we can put it down in a summation form okay uh, the connoisseurs of index notation will see that i am repeating the same index thrice which is not allowed okay so we can indicate that by saying well that is why i have put in this explicit summation I, when i put in explicit summation it is clear that the summation sus convention has been suspended for the moment okay so that's basically what i have the content of this slide is that what i am saying over here is if a has three independent and obviously one means linearly independent okay principal vectors vi just like i had them over here then they define the principal axis coordinate system okay which we will often perhaps abbreviate as pcs okay well maybe not uh so this is the principal axis coordinate system of this tensor a okay for a different tensor a you will have a different principal coordinate system generally these principal vectors are not orthogonal okay because of which this principal axis coordinate system that you form is not going to be a cartesian coordinate system here as you can see this is not a cartesian coordinate system okay now basically i am going to rewrite this example in the form of a fact that if a has principal pairs three principal pairs and from which you can 
you know uh, define a principal coordinate system then the matrix of a in the principal coordinate system is particularly simple it is diagonal and as i said you will you can use a similarity transformation to convince yourself that this can always be done and finally if you want to write it in tensorial notation then you can write it as the summation okay so that's the content of this slide now let's move